All right, and those are all of my general releases. So this is a very long video, but up next, I think we're going to move into some of the collab pairs that I have. Let's get right into it. First pair that we have are the Air Max 95 denims. A very special pair to me just because I missed out on the OG 95 neons. Honestly, this is actually cooler than the OG pair, I think. The next one that we have, we have a Nike Air Trainer 1 Travis Scott collab that flopped super hard this year. I still think this is a pretty cool sneaker. Very, you know, utility inspired design. So I'm always into that. I think a sneaker that's a lot better than most people kind of let on. Oh my God, I'm sweating. That's better. Next pair that we have, uh, we have a pair of Dunk Highs, and these are the Ambush Dunk Highs in the Volt colorway, of course. I think this is a very cool sneaker. I still love the super exaggerated swooshes and how they extend out the back of the sneaker. Honestly, I think the Volt pair is probably the coolest pair out of that Ambush Dunk High collection. Probably a hot take. I think a very cool sneaker. Um, the materials on this pair are actually pretty crazy. And another Dunk High, these are the Passport Nike Dunk Highs. And if you're seeing the tread now, anything that's like hiker aesthetic or just outdoor utility kind of rugged workwear inspired pieces and collaborations, super into. So this is a very cool pair of Dunk Highs. This is one of the few pairs that I actually paid resale for just because I really didn't want to miss out just because it was like a work boot inspired Dunk High that kind of just speaks to me in a whole bunch of ways. And switching gears really quick, these are the undefeated and then canteen dunks. This is right when I was starting to kind of like get back into collecting sneakers again, but I think this is a really cool pair just because this is when you couldn't get dunk lows for like the life of you. This is kind of like my first dunk low resurgence back into sneaker collecting. So another dunk high, these are the Notra Nike dunk highs. Again, this one was inspired by workwear and that's why kind of you have this workwear patch saying Notra on the tongue. All the canvas materials, nice leathers, super underrated dunk high. I, I think if these are a dunk low, they'd probably be way more hyped up. Kind of a crazy one, but another dunk high, these are the Froskate Nike dunk highs. And actually I should get both sneakers out here. Just a very cool collaboration. I love all of the colored panels on this shoe. It's a great statement sneaker to rock. And uh, I think it goes great with like all black or even like grayscale fits. Each one of these overlays of the colored panels actually wears down so that the color actually underneath like this red is what's on the opposite shoe. So on the right shoe in the blue teal. I also love sneakers that you can kind of beat up and there's kind of a purpose behind beating a pair of sneakers up. I'm all for wearing your sneakers, just adding another reason why uh, you should be beating up your sneakers is just super cool to me. Okay, it is way too hot. So up next, a sneaker that I don't wear too much just because it's kind of the cut and the shape of the sneaker. So these are the social status Nike Dunk Mids. And yeah, the, the materials used on this, how they add a 3D swoosh, and just the whole execution of the theme and following that theme to kind of a point. Very cool collaboration. Need to figure out how to style this one a bit more because of the shape. I think also very underrated. I mean, just look at the box. Come on, how's that not the coolest thing? And one of the best sneakers from last year, the Nike Air Max 1 Pata, the original Monarch colorway. This is such a pretty sneaker. It was one of the first sneakers in a long time where I felt really cool just putting them on feet and kind of having them early, being able to rock them. And they're, they're so easy to wear. This is definitely a keeper in the collection. Just one that I'm very happy and proud to have. Back here, we have the Tom Sachs general purpose shoe in the Sulphur colorway. And also a very cool sneaker. I love things like this because they just encourage you to kind of beat them up and wear them to the ground. They're kind of built specifically for that. So might be a contender for sneaker of the year. Again, okay, honestly, I think one of the best sneakers to release this year, but a lot of people are just forgetting about it and leaving it off of their sneaker of the year lists. This is the Stussy Nike Air Penny 2. This is such a great sneaker, but I think it just came out so late that people aren't even considering it for kind of their top sneakers of the year. Maybe that's because of like lower resale, but honestly, I feel like this is such a great sneaker. Being an all black sneaker makes it really hard to make something cool. Having different materials on the upper of the sneaker. Yeah, all, all together, I think it's just a very excellent shoe. And even though these just came out, I have worn these already just because I thought they were so cool. And the last one from the Nike collaborations, this is the Stussy Air Max 2013 in the linen colorway. This is such a cool pair, one that I initially passed on, but I had to go back and get just because I started seeing a lot of on-foot photos and they just looked super clean and super easy to wear. And they're actually very comfortable after wearing them myself.
Okay, let's move on to some Jordan collaborations. And I think a fitting one to start out with, the Amo Manier Jordan ones. Such a great collaboration. I feel like there's a I feel like there's a lot of hype on this pair before they even released. Like there are a lot of outfit videos and sneaker reviews on this because they were expecting this to be as hyped as the Jordan 3 Amo Maniers, but they just ended up not having that same level of hype because I think the threes are just that good. But to me, I think this is still a really excellent sneaker. Uh, the quality, the craftsmanship, the Air Jordan 2 Amo Maniers. This is one I think people still don't like because people still don't like the Jordan 2s, but I honestly really love this sneaker. And I actually think that it's very wearable. It's very comfortable. I, I think the Jordan 2 is just a really underappreciated design. I think it looks very sleek. The shape is very nice on the sneaker. And of course, the quality that Amo Maniers brings makes this, I think, a very underrated sneaker. All right. And since we're going through all the Amo Maniers, Alma Manier Jordan 4s. Really happy I was able to cop these for retail this year. Very excited to have this to kind of round out that Alma Manier Jordan collection. I think this one was a little bit underwhelming for me just because the craftsmanship on my pair is not the greatest and I don't know if you can see this but the shoe kind of like crooks to the right. And just because of that poor build quality, none of my other Jordan 4s look like this. I think this one just doesn't hit the same as the other Alma Manier collaborations. And up next, the Union Jordan 2s in the gray fog colorway. Actually, I haven't gotten to it, but I do have the Rattan pair that I'll show you. But after getting the Rattan pair, I ended up going back and getting these just because I love how resale is dying and I was able to pick these up for way under retail. And I still think this is a very excellent sneaker. All right, so should have pulled this one out first, but these are the Rattan Union Jordan 2s. And also a very underrated sneaker. I don't know why people still haven't caught on to the Jordan 2 yet, but honestly, on foot in this super clean, neutral colorway, I think these are super easy to wear and they just look so good on feet. People are definitely sleeping on these, especially with resale prices being as low as they are right now. And more Jordan 2s. These are the Nina Chanel Abney Jordan 2 Lows. This is honestly one that is a bit more underwhelming and kind of fits how I think a lot of other people feel about this sneaker, just that it could have been a whole lot better. I honestly thought that they would have used like super premium materials on this pair, but they're kind of just okay. They remind me a lot of like a Stan Smith. And uh, I think on full size run, they called these the wing stop joints. And honestly, ever since then, I just, I haven't looked at this sneaker the same way. It's funny how one phrase like that can ruin a sneaker. And next we have the Khaled Jordan 5s in the sale colorway. This sneaker, I think, is one that is gonna go up in price and also in people's hearts as well, just because it's such a clean sneaker. And honestly, I know the Jordan 5s aren't like the biggest thing, especially with like the younger generation. This is such a clean sneaker. It looks so good on foot, and I just love the little pops of colors and, of course, all the details that were added onto the sneaker as well. And kind of an interesting Jordan collab, but these are the Trophy Room Jordan 7s. I feel like this one is also a little bit on. Definitely the resale price doesn't reflect how great I think the sneaker is, but of course resale doesn't tell you everything either. But I think this is a really great collaboration. One that unfortunately, due to like the Trophy Room 1 release, tarnishes I think how great this sneaker is. Honestly, just a very great sneaker. The sevens really deserve more love. The detail is the quality on this pair. Very cool. They actually used real metal on the Jumpman and kind of the heel tab, so Quality like that, you just really don't really see from Jordan brand. And last but not least for the Jordan collabs, these are the Eastside Golf Jordan 12s. Honestly, was not a very big fan of kind of <laughs> the splatter on the 12s until I kind of saw uh, one of the owners from Eastside Golf wear them on the Complex Sneakers podcast. And ever since then, I was like, wow, they look way better on foot. But yeah, the quality that they use on this pair, super high quality, I think for at least Jordan brand. I think a pretty underrated sneaker, uh, but also one that I'm very happy that was super easy to get. Oh yeah, and the box is really great. I mean, I love how this painting just kind of wraps around the entire box. So cool.
So those are all the Jordan Nike collabs and we're moving into some New Balances. First pair that I have on here are the Jound New Balance 990 V3s, AKA the Vladimir Zelenskys. So very cool sneaker. I love the quality that goes into New Balance collaborations. Kind of sad that I missed out on kind of the olive colorway from Jound. I think these are a really nice muted sneaker. Kind of one that's, if you know, you kind of know what they are. The only thing about these is that I wish I got a half size down. Uh, they do run kind of big. If you are looking for these, definitely recommend a half size down. And next we have another brown New Balance, but these are the ALD 993s. Yeah, these are very, very cool. Super easy sneaker to style. A really great New Balance to have, I think, in the collection, just as a staple New Balance. And of course, pairing that one up, we have the ALD 993s in the taupe colorway. They are a very pretty sneaker, one that is honestly a lot harder to style than I anticipated. Maybe it just doesn't go with kind of what I have in my wardrobe. The sand color is oddly like bright, but not. Maybe I just need to grow kind of how I learn to style the sneaker. All right, continuing the imbalances, we have the Yurt 574, very hiker inspired. You have this very rugged looking outsole, a uh, whistle on the back, just a very cool sneaker. And what's that? <laughs> Another 574 Yurt, uh, this time in the forest green colorway. This is kind of, I think the classic colorway for the 574 Yurt. I think the forest green just looks really great on this pair, especially with the burgundy overlays on the mud guard. And I really feel like Solehi did a really great job kind of create his own silhouette and also do so many great colorways on it. And one more for you, the 574 yurts in the shark skin colorway. And I think this is the best color of the 574 yurts. Just that classic New Balance gray. For whatever reason, they just go so well with this silhouette too. The super chunky midsole, the really nice gray suede on the upper. So nice. Such a beautiful sneaker. Oh, and up next we have of course, box within a box. We have the Concepts New Balance 992s. I think I really wanted 992s and this is kind of the most available pair. Came in super cool packaging, as you could see. One that I think stylistically isn't the most interesting for me, but yeah, just one that's cool to have in the collection. Next, these are the Bodega 990B3s. Yeah, one that I happened to like pass on and then I was able to go back and get it for retail. Very, very glad that I'm able to have this pair for retail. This kind of started my addiction to New Balance sneakers and it just really showed me the difference in quality, craftsmanship, how collaborations just really hit differently on New Balances compared to like Nikes and Jordans. And moving along, we have the Joe Freshgoods. 2002 R's. A very cool sneaker, uh, one that I ended up doing a video for just because I kind of wanted to learn how to style a sneaker like this myself. I think I did an okay job, can probably do a better job today. Still a fun video to make and I think still a really great collaborative sneaker. Um, again, materials on New Balance collaborations are so nice. And of course, can't just say that I love Joe Fresh Goods. These are the Joe Fresh Goods 9060s. Such a great way to kick off the release of the 9060s from New Balance. Just a really great collaboration. Quality, storytelling, and the release of the shoe. More obtainable for normal people. I just love everything that Joe Fresh Goods does for New Balance and just sneaker culture in general. All right, and last but not least for Joe Fresh Goods, these are the 990 V3s outside clothes. Also another one that I was actually able to go back and get for retail. This is just such a great new balance. And honestly, I didn't get these at first because I thought they were kind of crazy with the earth tones and the crazy blue and the green. I get it now. It works so well together. And honestly, sneakers like this are more of just a piece of art rather than a sneaker all on its own. And yeah, I kind of live for sneakers like this one. All right, and next, one that I think was underwhelming for a lot of people, these are the Carhartt 990 V1s. I do agree that they're underwhelming, but I actually passed on this initially and went back and got them, just because even though they might be a little bit underwhelming, I still think it's a very clean New Balance. And even though Carhartt could have done a little bit more with this collaboration, I still really enjoy the understated look and colorway of this sneaker. And a New Balance collaboration that I feel like is a little bit underrated, the Stray Rats 991s. So this colorway I think is a little bit conflicting with a lot of people just because Stray Rats always throws like a bunch of grungy and like punk inspired colors. This kind of reminds me of like any character in a video game that's like poison based. It still looks really good. And honestly, the sneaker looks really great on feet. And with New Balance collaborations, you just can't go wrong with the quality that you're getting. All right, and last but not least, last collaborative pair from this section and also from New Balance. These are the Basement 
2002 R's. Honestly, one of my favorites, just such a great sneaker. I think the basement did such a great job at executing this colorway. The different shades of green, the different materials used on the upper from the rubberized dark panels to the water resistant green suede, and then the rubberized mud guard and heel counter just all looks so rugged and it looks so cool. I think this is one that's so easy to wear as well. 2002 is a super comfortable model. I, I just love this collaboration. Such a great pair, and I think one of my favorite New Balances. These are the Obra Mars. I don't know what they're actually called. There's a Nike swoosh on this Chuck 70. And welcome to the grills section of the video. Actually, before we get into the grills, a plastic bag. 